Welcome, 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 welcome. Talent Matters podcast is here. It's back. It's live. Well, it's not live because you'll this we're recording this and it'll go out and whenever it goes out. But I'm don't worry about that. I'm Dave from Wave, and today sun is shining, so everyone is 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 slightly cheery. Uh, we're si- sh- shining here in the UK. Uh, Stephen, I'll find out what the weather's doing there uh, in a moment. Uh, but the sun is shining here and we're all happy, but times are times are a little bit tough. Everyone is feeling the squeeze at the minute. Uh, there is uh, probably not quite as much work around as there have been in the in, in the past. Um, multiple, multiple reasons for that. We'll, we'll get into that. But hopefully this podcast will give you just a little bit of light relief from uh, from your daily grind. Uh, but then then again, I was thinking about that. Because the topic of our podcast today is job board pricing models. So I don't know if that's going to give anyone light relief unless we're telling everyone the prices are going to go down and you're all going to pay less. <laughs> you know, maybe if you're smart, maybe we can find some different ways of doing it. Maybe we can kind of work work through that. But today I am joined by Stephen Rothbow, uh, a, a veteran, a legend of the job board world, uh, founder of uh, College Recruiter, fantastic website. Check it out, Stephen. You can introduce that in a in a moment. But you know, it's a thirty year old website. The business began for thirty years. So what this guy doesn't know about job boards and specifically, hopefully now, job board pricing, topic of the podcast, you'd expect him to to know a little bit about that, um, isn't worth worrying about. So we're going to get really really stuck into it. So. Stephen, hello, welcome, welcome to Talent Matters podcast. We'll see how this goes, shall we? But how are you? I'm good, Dave, and and, and I think our our weather is uh, about the same as yours. I, I I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So for the listeners who aren't perfectly versed in American geography, um, we're basically right in the middle of the country, right up at the top. Yes. So our our we we typically have more sun than the UK does. Um, but we're usually, but we're usually under four or five feet of snow. So I don't know if we win or lose in that, in that scenario. Yeah. Not, not, not to, not to show, but then, you know, we we always talk about the weather. We always love talking about the weather. Oh yeah. In the UK. It's one of, it's one of our few strengths we have as a, as a nation. But anyway, let's. And, and really good beer. And yeah, to be fair, I'll give you that one as well. Yeah. Enjoy, uh, enjoy it. But we might need a beer or two after uh, after this because we're talking <laughs> about job boards, right? And and you know you've seen a lot over thirty years, yeah, of of job boards from their very very inception to where they are now. I was thinking earlier. I don't know if I'm going to set you this challenge, but I mean, is there a way in which you can summarize thirty years of everything that's gone on mm. in a little intro about yourself? I mean. I don't know if I want to sure. challenge to you because that's a lot of time to get into a short period of time. Yeah. So just, you know, if you wanted to sort of be about myself or, or the organization rather than the industry. So um, I uh, grew up in Winnipeg, Canada, right right in the middle. Um, I like to joke that I'm the only person ever to have moved to Minnesota for the weather. The weather here is harsh. Um, we are the envy of of those in, in Manitoba, the province that I grew up in. Um, came here for grad school. And when I was um, I, for law school, and when I was practicing in my first year out of law school, I got the origins of this business started. Um, so that was like, that was around um, the fall of 91. By 92, I was working full-time in the business. So it took about six, seven, eight months of sort of part-time, you know, working full-time as a lawyer, part-time getting the business started. Um, the initial very early part of the business was publishing campus maps, maps for college and university campuses, sold the advertising around the borders, uh, gave the maps away for free to to incoming students. So they're called in in the US, the freshmen, um, many of other places in the world, you know, first years or freshers or, or whatever, um, wanted to diversify the business away from just doing these campus maps, hitting the first year students. And so I wanted to figure out like what product could I offer that would hit the graduating, uh, the fourth years generally, or the seniors as a lot of Americans will call them. And the thing that those people need more than anything else are jobs. 
So I created an employment magazine that was called um, College Recruiter. This is 1994. And then 95 is, 94, 95 is when the internet started to become really commercialized. Um, You had the introduction of the Netscape browser. um, And suddenly people could go to websites pretty easily. Yeah. And 96 um, is when we launched the first version of our website um, that later became called College Recruiter. And since its inception back then, we've grown tremendously and changed tremendously. And, and so has the industry. Um, it It's really hard to kind of look and, at what most job boards of any size are doing now and say truthfully that it's the same as what they were doing 20, 30 years ago. But it's definitely, it's a narrative that job boards haven't advanced, that they haven't innovated. But then in the same breath, a lot of the people that will say that will complain about the changes and innovations. Um, so you, know, you, can't, you can't have it both ways. Um, and some what of that, I, you know, we're going we're to dig into that. And that's, that's some of the, the yeah. pricing models. Yeah. Uh, people yeah. see people say, oh, my job board, you know, the job boards I use, they never change. But boy, do I hate the changes that they're rolling out. Yeah. <laughs> There's always people like that. <laughs> we're, uh, we're blessed with people like that. We keep us on the toes, right? So let's talk about, let, let's talk about pricing models then. Because sure. You know, the majority of the people that will watch this podcast, hopefully, I think, are, yeah. um, you know, will be UK based or staffing businesses, you know, and traditionally we've always worked with a, a duration based price, yeah. um, you know, ad. And that is you, you pay your money and you get your credit, you, 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 you post and you post it and you go and it's for however long it is. And yeah, then, usually, yeah. usually 30 days. That's it. Yeah. That's yes. still predominantly a big part of the UK job board makeup, yeah. certainly within the staffing world. But, you know, we've seen the likes of Indeed, you know, which, mm-hmm. by the way, I didn't know, Indeed's like nearly 20 years old. Like, I'm yeah. Really old because, you know, they seem like still so new to me. Um, but, yeah, so indeed come along and there's so there's different other models. Um so yeah. let's let's just start really kind of like laying it out with you got duration and yeah. what else? What else is there? Yeah. There when I think of it, I I think of there being basically like five basic pricing models. Um a lot of those of us it a lot of us in the industry, whether whether we're working for a large aggregator. Um, like a what jobs, like an Adzuna, and we can talk if it matters later, like what, what's the difference between an aggregator versus a general site, like an Indeed or a LinkedIn or a niche site, like, like a college recruiter. But regardless of the kind of site, I think of there being basically five, um, different pricing models. So like you said, Dave, the, the traditional model is duration based. And it comes right out of the newspaper classified business. You called up your local newspaper and you ran an ad, usually on Saturday or Sunday, whatever the big newspaper is in that market for that week. And that's where most people went to find jobs. Why that day? It was very circular. The more people who picked up that day's newspaper, the more employers wanted to be in that newspaper, that edition of paper. The more employers I wanted to be in that, the more people would pick it up. So it was kind of like this virtuous circle, if you will. Um, mo- many markets, it was a sun. It was the Sunday paper. They would charge you, you know, X pounds to run your ad for in so many lines. The duration was a day. Um, in, in most markets, if it was a daily paper, if it was a smaller market, it might be a week because that market might only have you know a one 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 paper a week. The when job boards came along, the Essentially, what we did is we took newspaper classified ads and put them online. One of the huge benefits of that is that those ads then became searchable. You could keyword search. You could filter them a lot easier than kind of flipping pages and going through the different columns. And you could just get to the ads that you most wanted, at least in theory. Um, The quality of search has always been a struggle. That's probably a topic for another podcast another time. But at the end of the day, whether anybody saw your ad or not, 
whether anybody responded to it or not, whether the quality of those responses, the applications, whether they were good or not, whether you hired anybody or not, you paid the same amount. So that was like that traditional duration-based model. Um, you know, it might be 200 pounds for 30 days. Incidentally, where where does that 200 pounds or in the US, it was very often $300. Where does that come from? That was the commission that advertising agencies earned to place ads in newspapers. That was sort of the most common amount that if a big employer were to run like a display ad or a quarter page ad or something like that, they would usually make a, you know, two, 300 pounds or dollars. And that's where that pricing came from. Um, it, it was as arbitrary as that. When Indeed came in, they were not the first job board that offered a cost per click model, but they were the ones who popularized it. The first cost per click job board um, was a site called Top USA Jobs, and they still exist. Um, they are they're an aggregator. Now, a cost per click, what that is, is the candidate searches for the job. They look at the job. They're re reading the job description, the job details. And there's usually a button that says something like apply. And when the candidate clicks on that button, that's the click. That's the action that sort of triggers the payment. Now you owe us, you know, a pound. 50p, whatever it might be. With some employers, with some job boards, the candidate is going to go to an application page hosted by the job board. So they're still on the job board. They fill in the application page, they hit submit, and that application goes to the employer. It might go right into their ATS or CRM. It might come to them by email. But the click is that clicking the apply. So generally, about 5%, one out of 20 clicks converts into an application. And that's not just a college recruiter stat. We see similar numbers. It varies employer to employer. It varies industry to industry, but generally overall, it's roughly 5%. Um, some of the people who click that submit button or that apply button and go over to the application page, the employer or the staffing company should be thankful that that candidate does not apply because they're very poorly qualified. They might go to the employer's page, see that it's an employer they don't want to work for. They, it's a staffing company that they don't want. They're just window shopping. And so it's better for them not to apply. So, but mostly employers, staffing companies, job boards, we all want to see a higher percentage of candidates that are clicking, converting into applications. Yeah. The closer that the job board can get that candidate to the point of hire, the more value we add. So instead of charging you per click, the third model is charging per application. Indeed tried to roll this out um, about, oh, what was it? Nine months ago, 10 months ago, they, they announced that their annual conference in the fall of, of 2023, um, we're switching everybody over from cost per click to cost per application. Surprise. Well, wasn't a surprise to most people in the industry. But it definitely was a surprise to a lot of their customers, especially the smaller customers. Yeah, cost per application conversations with clients about that. Um, oh yeah, and it's 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 one thing to get to buy a click that does not convert into an application, and you're paying fifty p for it. But if you're paying twenty five pounds for an application that is of poor quality, that bothers you more. The math can actually all work out the same. At the end of the day. Does it really matter if you're wasting, you know, a whole bunch of 50 P's, you know, pounds on clicks or 25 pounds on an application? If you're spending thousands of pounds a month yeah. and not getting quality applications, that's all that really matters, whether it's per click or whether it's per application. It's like calling yeah. and you're paying for something. Yes. You buy a click, then you know it's the same click or, you know, you know what you're getting. If you buy... And there's still some um, mystery in, is that click a good candidate or what? Don't know. Yes. See, when you get yeah, it, application and it's poor, you're like, what you see it. <laughs> and yeah, it's, and, and, and the clicks, it's, it, it can be like a death by a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. Right. You still die at the end of the day 
but each one individually isn't that painful. And so, you know, another analogy I've heard is is the old you know proverb about the, the the frog in the boiling pot of water. If you put a frog in a pot of water and gradually bring up the heat, they say that the frog never jumps out. That's actually not true. But but you know that the the, fro- the the water comes up, the frog will. Be- but if you throw the frog into a pot that's already boiling, you know the frog jumps out right away. So then you know the already boiling pot is more like the cost per application. So the cost per application, it's it. If you think about one in 20 clicks converting it into an application, then you can kind of do the math and say, if I'm paying a dollar per click, I should expect to pay 20 pounds for an application because it's going to take roughly 20 clicks to get to an application. In reality, you'll probably pay more than 20 pounds. You'll probably pay more like 25 because the job board is taking on more risk there. If the candidate, if the 20 clicks don't convert into an application, the job board doesn't get any money. So they're probably going to charge you a little bit more. That's okay. Cause for the staffing company, your risk is lowered. There's a big problem. And Dave, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head, the psychology of that. So I don't know of any popular job board that's really shifted to this next pricing model, like the option number four, but I think it's going to be happening soon. Um, over the next year or two, and that would be cost per quality application. Um, instead of CP, CPA, cost per application, um, C, um, then it's going to be CPQA. This is really difficult because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you go to a staffing company that has, say, 50 recruiters, Every single one of those 50 recruiters will look at the same application from the same candidate for the same job and will have different opinions about how well qualified that candidate is. To make it even more difficult, if a recruiter came into work on a Monday morning and it's sunny out and they're feeling good, they're going to have a different opinion about that application than that same recruiter will two hours later when their boss comes in and yells at them. Um, and then three days later, when their spouse tells them, you know, they just got a great promotion and everything's glorious and they're feeling optimistic again, that recruiter, they're going to feel a different way again. So one of the big problems that buyers of applications have when they're like, I don't want to pay for applications that aren't quality is how do you define quality? And if it's really just kind of like, well, I didn't hire the person, now you're talking about cost per hire. You're not talking about cost per application. And that's that's another way that some job boards have tried to charge is on a cost per hire basis. In my mind, that's never going to work. And, and one of the reasons that I don't- It's like a staffing business. This is- Right. Exactly. It's a, it's a, different, it's a different industry. You want to be- you want to- like pay per hire well that's what staffing businesses do so right i mean we're we're now navigating into choppy waters of of indeed and there um you know what is is being proposed that they may well be doing which is you know another 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 conversation but yeah the quality is so subjective it's it's you know the 50 recruiters um, example you gave there is absolutely spot on. Yeah. The 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 cost per hire, when, when I hear that, the analogy that I think of is the difference between going to a grocery store versus going to a restaurant. The job board is the grocery store, right? We're going to sell you kind of the raw material. You take that home and you turn that into dinner. You go to a restaurant, it's prepared for you. you in, in a staffing kind of a world, you've hired someone. It's yeah. done. It's finished. And so I don't think that that's any longer a job board model, but I'm glad that you mentioned Indeed, and we can talk about this later if, if you wish, but Indeed is increasingly blurring those lines. Are they a job board? Are they a staffing company? My answer is today, they're much more of a job board than they are a staffing company. A year from now, if you ask me the same question, are they more of a job board? Are they more of a staffing company? I think my answer to you would be yes. There's, there's sort of it. 
they're sort of both, I, I think is where they're going. Unless they change their mind, of course, because the, the cost per oh. fly, yep. it, and then they rode that back, didn't they? But they did. And I think we should applaud them for that. How many listeners have made ever made a bad business decision? Like every single one of us, right? What's much harder than making a bad decision is admitting it. And if you admit it, now you kind of have to do something about it. So I think we should applaud indeed for admitting that the way that they rolled this out was to be charitable, less than optimal. It's going to happen. It's going to come back and they'll do it a bit, and they will do a much better job the next time. You know, people can hate on indeed. I am not an indeed hater. I really admire how well they have executed over the years. They have executed far better than virtually any organization in our space, job board, staffing, whatever. And I think one of the reasons why people feel uncomfortable about some of Indeed's decisions going to cost or apply um, temporarily, maybe getting into the staffing business um, more overtly, is because they know that the likelihood of Indeed succeeding is really high. The Indeed piece, if I may, brings us to the fifth um, pricing model, and that's really no price at all. That's, that's organic. Um, organic is free. So if you have a website and in D, your, your website is listed on Google or some of the other search engines, Bing, whatever, and somebody runs a search and they see your listing there and they click to come over to your website, not where you're paying for that, but you just get that for free, that's organic. And Indeed has done organic listings since its inception. When they started off, they wanted to be kind of like the Google for jobs. They wanted to have all of the jobs that they could find. So they took jobs for job boards. They took jobs from staffing companies. They took jobs from employers and they did all of that for free. If you wanted to get more traffic, then you paid that. But it was kind of, so call it a freemium model. The vast majority of postings, there was no charge for that indeed to run them including when the candidate clicked, when the candidate applied, when when you hired that candidate. Years ago, indeed, about 10 years ago, indeed stopped taking postings from job boards. And the writing was on the wall then for staffing companies. Some chose to accept that and deal with it. And some chose to pretend that it was never going to happen. Um, but those of us in the job board world, we knew we were first and we knew we were not last. There was uproar when that happened as well with the yep yeah we used we used to get um eighty thousand clicks a month from indeed for free um at a time where the fair market value of those clicks was, was about 25 cents so we were getting thousands of dollars a couple thousand dollars a month in traffic for free from indeed and you know if i was a small or a large staffing company I would be looking at that the same way. It's like, shoot, I'm going to have to pay for that now. What Indeed seems to be doing is, is not refusing to run postings for staffing companies. What they seem to be doing is saying, if you're a staffing company and you have 300 postings, you're going to have to pay for all of them, not just 10 of them or 20 of them, and then the others be, be free. So staffing companies' margins are, are going to go down. It also presents an opportunity for staffing companies because some staffing companies will say, well, it's a bummer that we're going to have to pay for all this traffic, but it's still worth it to us. These are still candidates that are, have value to us, and we can make a lot more money by bringing that candidate in and converting that into a placement. So to refuse to pay indeed is... You know the expression like cutting off your nose to spite your face, whatever the heck that means. It, it's just, I, 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 I think it's, I think it's the wrong decision. It's, it's, it's more of an emotional than, than a rational decision. If the Adid traffic is of good quality and you are placing enough of those people, then buy the traffic. It, some of your competitors won't. It gives you a competitive advantage if you're buying that traffic. On the, on the other sort of. Uh, point of view on that and yeah it did again it did sort of upset a few few of our customers and and you know when it when it got switched off but yeah and and 
fact, some most have then now gone and actually purchased some of the traffic. So if it was, yeah. this isn't by indeed, generally it's, it's, I would say it's work, but also going back to the psychology of, of the free ads, we would talk to people and they'd say, yeah, we use indeed, we use it for free. Um, and sometimes mm-hmm. we have a conversation to say, well, you're getting, you know, a tiny fraction of what you could get if you invest right. a small amount more of money, uh, a small amount more money on it. And they would say, you know, quite almost rightly, uh, why would I pay for something that I'm already getting for free? No, I'm not going to give you more money because I already get enough candidates. And that was almost the, the end of the conversation where yeah. people are being almost forced to have to pay, but they're also taking it a lot more seriously. They're valuing those candidates so much more um, as something they've paid for. The old, the, the, the uh, opposite of paying 25 pounds for a bad candidate if you're paying for a candidate and you and you you get someone for free then there is still this sort of like well they're just free they're free you know they're not as good mm-hmm. as i've had from another job board that mm. so yeah there's also another psychological sort of shift that's happened with yeah we we do tend to place more value on things that we pay for than things that just come to us for free. And I think intellectually, rationally, I think we all know that that it shouldn't be the case. We shouldn't think that way. All that really matters is, is that candidate good or not? What we paid for, make them better or worse. You know, somebody, you know, when somebody pulls up outside of your home um, later today and gives you that Lamborghini um, completely free of charge, I think you're still going to value that Lamborghini. Um, and you probably wouldn't say, oh, well, no, I don't really want it because it's free. You, know, you might, you might have like more pride in it if you had worked, made the money, bought it. But, but at the end of the day, it's still a Lamborghini. So that like the Lamborghini isn't any different. The candidate isn't any different. How you feel about them is different, but it doesn't really change the value of the candidate, especially when you're essentially selling that candidate to to a customer, to, to an employer. The, the, the model that I think we're going to see coming is in CB Wallet, um, Richard Richard and Be- Beverly Collins company um, out of the UK is is one of the ones that's really leading the, the charge here, is what's being called um, CPQVA, cost per qualified validated candidate. And the way that they're defining quality is the same as what we at College Recruiter do. The employer needs to provide um, ahead of time, ahead of when the candidate sees the ad, some knockout kinds of questions. Um, are you allowed to work in the UK? Do you have an engineering degree? You know, those those sorts of yes, no, objective questions, not are you smart? Do you do this quickly? You know, quickly is subjective. What you think of quickly, I might think is slow. And so, but if it's, you know, can you do, you know, arrange these boxes in a minute and a half or less? That is an objective measure. It's either yes or it's no, it's black and white. So those qualifying questions, if the candidate doesn't answer each and every one of them, let's say correctly, they're not qualified. It's not, the, and the application doesn't happen. The validation is becoming increasingly important, and that's an effort to combat um, fake candidates. Some of the candidates, they might be like North Korean IT people who are trying to get hired into your business so that they can hack into your systems, but they're going to use somebody else's identity. They might be made up. They might actually use a real person's identity. That's becoming a problem. It's their outlier cases. They're, it's not common. But there certainly have there are certainly some of them out there, and some of the fake candidates are AI generated bots, um, and and again there are a, there are a myriad of reasons why organizations will like send a bot to you um, to to apply. I'm not talking about a bot that assists a, a real candidate. I'm talking about a bot that pretends, you know, that, that there's actually no real candidate be behind it. Um, so. A way that you can validate a candidate is looking at their passport, driver's license, some kind of government issued ID. That and and um, 
do they actually have a degree from such and such a university? That's another way of validating that that this person actually exists. So that kind of an application where it's qualified, where it's validated, is of course of higher value to the staff and company, to the employer. So instead of charging 25 pounds for that, it might be 35 or 40. I think that's where job boards are going. I think in, in two or three years, most job boards will not be there, but it also won't be hard for employers or staffing companies to find the job boards that are there. You know, you might have what jobs doing that at Zuna and not, or the other way around. So if it matters to you, then you'll buy from what jobs and you won't buy from Ed Zuno or the other way around again. You know, it's really interesting with the whole fake candidates. And I, I certainly know, as you said, it's an outlier of a, of a challenge. I think most, of, most staffing businesses will probably come one notch lower than that. And we're talking about quality applications. And I think a lot of them get fed up with a volume of applications where you they will bear zero re, um, resemblance to the job that was that was posted. Yes, yes. Not e- you know even allowing for your twenty to thirty percent you know uh, delta between the the um, transferable skills that they may have, they're completely different planets. Of you know I'm right I'm for a, for a, you know. For it, for an X, for an ABC, and I'm getting an XYZ. Um, you know, right? And yeah, so- I'm hiring. I'm hiring a barista in Sheffield, and an IT professional in Bangladesh applies. Like, in what world could that possibly be a well qualified candidate? It okay. simply not. A huge reason for that is that some job boards and some staffing companies and some employers have made it too easy for candidates to apply. I'm certainly not advocating a return to the 45 minute application process, but some knockout questions are a good thing, you know, and, you know, LinkedIn do that. We were playing around with it yesterday and uh, no, yesterday, last week and looking at some jobs and, um, you know, running through and there's, they have some, some knockout questions like that. And when we've repeat, yeah. and seen those there as well. But it's also sometimes easy to just go, yes, 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 isn't it? Yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do this. You need second. Mm -hmm. One of the things, if if I might, I know our time is short, but one of the things that I've been um, seeing in the media a lot, analysts, is as Indeed, as LinkedIn kind of move closer to that staffing model where They're charging per application, maybe per qualified application, maybe even some of them per hire, very threatening staffing companies. Does that foretell or foreshadow the the end of staffing companies? Do staffing companies go away because Indeed is just going to overwhelm them? I actually think it's the opposite. And, And maybe like, hopefully some of your listeners will agree with me. I think that with the way technology is going, it's going to become harder and harder for the ultimate employer to differentiate between a well-qualified applicant versus a bot that isn't even an applicant to begin with. And when I think about what staffing companies do exceptionally well, it is essentially acting as an intermediary between the candidate and that ultimate employer, a staffing company is never going to send a bot to an employer. But a job board will, because a job board, we're not going to meet with that person, you know, with with that candidate in person. We're not going to have a Zoom call with them. We're not going to interview them and say, Dave, what are your interests? Why are you applying to this job? And trying to take that 100 applications down to five and then present those five to the hiring manager. That's not our business. It's not our industry. But there's huge value add there. And with well, the like, relationship, isn't it? it yeah. On, relationship. on both sides, well, right? It's not just the relationship with the hiring manager. It's also the relationship with the candidate. And to the extent that the staff and company can have a stronger relationship with both, there's 
huge value add. Employers are never in the business of employing people, right? It's it's a means to an end, hiring people. They're there to, you know, serve coffee, coffee, you know, run a grocery store, manufacture items. Staffing companies, the more that they can help those employers figure out who the best applicants are and then get them hired, that's tremendous value add. I have a hard time for as large as Indeed is, and it's way larger than most job boards, for as large as they are, as well as they execute, I have a hard time envisioning them literally interviewing millions and millions of candidates a year to try to get that down to hundreds of thousands that employers will then hire. It doesn't scale well. It, it's a very, very different business. Not their model. And, you know, I think yeah. sometimes you need that intermediary to be able to say, Dave, look, I've spoken to these candidates. This this one doesn't quite fit what you're looking for, but they're really good here, 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 and here. Just talk to them, try them. Yeah. Personality between your business and this person fits perfectly. Yeah. And someone is it has to be experienced to be able to know that. And like you said, that doesn't scale from a tech perspective. So right. you always reach that point where you need the human judgment and persuasiveness and the people skills to be able to set those two things up. So yeah. So, you know, we 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 started with a sunny day and and maybe we maybe we're kind of like um still sunny here at the end of the day. <laughs> so so I, one thing I wanted to ask you was around the yeah, going in the future. I mean, we've kind of touched on that a little bit. And actually as we've been talking, you know, you've talked about verified uh candidates and it then also pops in my mind now, every time I post a, a, a something on LinkedIn, it asks yeah. me to verified. So mm. precursor as well to uh, job yeah. holding more candidate information and asking job seekers to verify. Is that the future? It's That's a really great question. Um, and the answer is I absolutely don't know. <laughs> so um, I do, I, there, there are things that, that I think I can kind of look around the corner and sort of and and feel very confident about where we're going to be, you know, in a year or two. This is one of the ones where I'm really torn. So job boards, you talk to if you put a hundred job board leaders into a room, probably at least ninety five of them would say that their database of candidates is their greatest asset. That the more candidates who register with the job board, the better the value that job board can deliver to its employer customers. I'm in the other group. Hundred hundred uh, job board leaders in a room. Last job board connect. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Where you and I had the the, the pleasure of of talking to each other last last fall. Um, the I'm in the other group. I'm in the group of the five, who actually we we believe this group of, you know, a small percentage, the job boards are moving away, are going to need to move away from housing or, or holding any data on the candidate. So one of the things that we did at College Recruiter a couple years ago is that we decided in that we were going to grow internationally, including the UK. And we, with all the different privacy laws out there, there are now about 190 different privacy laws around the world. For a fairly small organization like us to be aware of them, to know how to comply with them, to actually comply with them was just impossible. The indeeds of the world can do that, but the vast majority of organizations just can't. And it's it's this I'm not economically feasible. So if we were going to go grow globally, we really felt like we could not continue to collect personally identifiable information, names, emails, phones, even full IP addresses. And so we stopped. So we do not collect PII, personally identifiable information on candidates. And I've talked with Richard Collins at CB Wallet about this, and he and I are, are pretty aligned on what on what we think. And that is, we think that the world is moving towards consumers, individuals, owning and controlling their own data. And that those of us in the job board world, the staffing world, et cetera, 
we will not own that candidate data. We will facilitate the interactions between the candidates and the employers. Now, from a staffing perspective, you have to get the CV. You have to evaluate that candidate, right? And before you send them over to the employer, but there might be a limited time that you can actually hold that information. The At the end of the day, we are in a world which is increasingly global, increasingly digital, and increasingly risky for people when our information is out there. And I'm a Gen Xer. Um, I'm that frog in the pot of water that is slowly being brought up to a boil. I will likely never jump out of that pot. In other words, I, it's like my information is out there. I get it. I'm at risk. But the, the risk that I have today is not that much greater than the risk I had yesterday or the year before. Gen Alpha, which is just starting to come into the workforce now, they're the frog that's jumping into the boiling pot of water. They've never had their information, their CVs, all of that data out there. And they're the first generation that is going to really be able to say no. If you, the job board, are going to require me to give you my data in order for you to help me find a job, then screw you. I'm going to go to a job board that doesn't. Job data, job postings or commodities, you can find that job in a whole bunch of different places. So I'm going to choose to go to the job board that doesn't require me to hand over my data. I'm going to choose to work with a staffing company that I can see has a good track record of only using the data of mine that it needs for as long as it needs to, and then destroying it. As soon as I'm like no one, no longer under consideration, as soon as I've been placed, I'm out. And if I ever want to help their help again in finding a position, I will go back to them again. But I'm I'm in control of my data. I think that's where we're going. Um, don't get me wrong. Don't don't wake. Don't expect to wake up tomorrow and see that total jobs all of a sudden is not collecting PII or that you know some of the you know Ronstadt isn't going to hold CVs anymore. This is going to be a small number that will that will kind of do what we're doing and maybe it'll work and maybe it won't, but it's going to be years before we know if this is the case. One other thing, if I might, Dave, you mentioned earlier about staffing companies sort of being upset about wasting advertising dollars. Why, why would we spend money when we already have enough applicants? They're absolutely right. And that's what budgets are for. Budgets, not only for like the entire staffing company. Hey, Dave, you know, Here's 10,000 pounds to market our job opportunities, but it's more about we have a, these 100 roles, 90 of them we actually don't need help with. So just socially share that and you know we can get a trickle and that's all we really need. These 10 are, are really critical and we don't actually have nearly enough um, qualified applications. So what I want WAVE to do is help drive applications for those 10. And I think that's whether it's whether it's an, a, an ad agency, whether it's an RPO, whether it's in-house, that's going to be a huge change. You're no longer as a staffing company or employer marketing all of your roles together. You're going to need to be more selective, more granular. Couldn't agree more. I think that's, you know, I think that if there is anything that you can take out of any of the price increases, it has been the added magnifying glass that businesses have had to look at where they're posting their jobs, when they're posting their jobs, and what they're actually getting getting back from. Yeah. And for how long? You know, you, you run a job for three days, you got enough, you have enough applicants. Why are you running it the fourth day, the 14th day, the 24th day? Take it down. It, it And it, it can all be automated. Yeah. And I, I agree. I think that's one of the one of the good things around you know the whole different models that we've we've talked about. So I I think yeah I think going back to your point around the data that's being held, I don't know which way will 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 prosper, but I do think whichever one gives the candidate the best jobs and mm -hmm. success, the most accurate jobs to give to them, I think that will be the winner because I think a candidate will say it's a drag putting this information in and I don't want to give you my data, but I know if I do, I'll get the right job. And if mm -hmm. I get the job board that doesn't, 
and they don't give me the right data, I won't go back there. Mm -hmm. Like jobs from a job board without putting their data in, then of course they'll go there every time because they'll be like, why am I wasting my time doing this? So I, I come back to whichever one gives you the best. We haven't even talked about relevancy or, or relevant applications or quality, anything really like that. Whichever one scores that goal wins. And then I think yep. whatever data they hold or get, they can then choose. But yeah, like you said, maybe it will, maybe it won't. You know, I don't know. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> Playing these all the time. It, it it does and and uh and, and it, it and it, it you can say it keeps us young but it also it also makes us old <laughs> it's... i had a full of fire when i started this fitness i was fresh. right right yeah and 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 the loss of hair that both of us has it has nothing to do with genetics it's it's all about trying to figure out the right cost per click <laughs> we are over time, I'm sure we're over time. That's been brilliant. I, I, I hope uh, I hope you've you, you've enjoyed chewing the fat um, and some of the stuff you you, you um, shared with us has been really really insightful. Um, so, Stephen, thank you for for that. That was um, yeah. Thank thank you for the opportunity to to be here. This was really fun. Good, it's good fun all good fun all around. So, thank you everyone for for, for listening and watching. Uh, hopefully, you got something from that as as well other than just uh weather um weather from 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 where we were hope you enjoyed it please feel free to like comment tell us it was rubbish tell us it was great tell us we're wrong tell us we're right tell us what you think don't don't hold back not sure that all of this is uh there's a right and a wrong with any of this anyway but thanks very much for for listening this was talent matters day from wave steven rothberg college recruiter thank you very much bye everyone Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers.